Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy. Today I have a piece of what I believe is plum, could be alder. I think it's a young, youngish plum. The bark is uh, different than most of the plum that I've been turning, but the coloring, well, I, I don't know, I don't know. Plum or alder, the bark actually looks like alder at this point, but I thought I had it in the pile of what I thought was plum. So anyway, I guess we'll cut into it and find out what it is, we hope. Yeah, maybe it's alder. I don't know. Anyway, it's kind of an odd shape. It's a full round log with a crotch. And I'm just going to turn a bowl out of it, a live edge bowl. I intend to leave some bark along the top edge. This is the bottom. This is going to be the top. I'm going to round this up. with. I, I don't want to make it fully round. I want to make it elongated, kind of an oval shape. So my intention is to start early here and go all the way up to here. This will be the top edge. I don't know if I have enough room to do this. This is about 10 inches long by about 7 inches across at the widest point. And then it's about 4, 4 and a quarter inches thick this way. So we're just going to see what happens. Who knows? I don't. Stand by. As you might imagine, this is pretty out of balance, so the best I can do is about 460 RPM. I've got my 5 8 inch bowl gouge sharpened up and mask and face shield on. Might be able to pick the speed up a little now, and it's plumb. Not much, about 520. That'll be our tenon size. I'm just going to use this diamond point tool to square up the sides of my tenon. Switch to a 3 8 inch gouge to uh, clean this area up a little bit. We'll get back to work on the sides here. Oh, that's kind of pretty. Well, it's not a very good tooling job. There's so much bounce to it, I just can't get a smooth cut. Let me get in here a little closer and try one more time. Looking at you. Well, I'm going to have to figure a way to cut that off. About all I can do is a parting tool. Like I say, it's between centers, so there's nothing holding it up here. Once that's gone, it's going to go flying. So I just want to get it smaller and then cut it off with a saw. 
Let me get set up for all that. Okay, so I've installed my six inch tool vest so I can get in here a little closer. I'm just going to take a parting tool and part this way down and then I'll cut the rest off with a saw. I hope it, I hope it holds. Not a lot of bite there. Slow it down here a little bit and get rid of some of that vibration. Alright, that's probably close enough. Now the hard part's finding that center again. So I still got some sanding to do. You know, I think I think I can see the center. Or maybe this will give me an opportunity to get it more centered up. Let's see. Yeah. That's not any worse than it was. That'll work. Okay, so I'm going to do a little cleanup and then you guessed it, time for sanding. I hardly ever have to resort to this, but uh, this piece is so out of balance and there's so much vibration, I just could not get a smooth cut. It's not bad, but it's not great either. A little embarrassing. So I'm going to use my 60 grit Sandoflex. To work on this. I'm going to have the lathe spinning in reverse and have it going against it like that. And I'm going to spin in reverse. And I'll do the same thing in forward from this side. That's actually cleaning up pretty good. Then I'll switch over to my 80 grit 2 inch sanding disc. Again in reverse. And I'll do that up through uh, 400 grit, alternating between reverse and forward. Yeah, that's going to that's gonna do alright. That's going to look good. And I'll bring you back when it's time to put some finish on here. Well, what do you know? Sanding is done. And I'm pleased about that. I'm also pleased that the, this wood does not seem to be susceptible to bugs. I don't remember any uh, plum wood that I've turned that had bug holes in it. And after last week's piece, which was nothing but bug holes, this is kind of refreshing. And I am applying uh, Howard Feed and Wax. It's an orange oil with beeswax and carnauba wax in it. And it always makes a piece look pretty darn nice. And this doesn't appear to be any exception. It smells good too. It smells like oranges. So I'm going to let this set on here for about a half an hour. I'll come back out and buff it up. And then it'll be time to turn this around and hollow it out. I don't know if I like that or the outside, doing the outside. Which one's more fun? What do you like? Doing the outside determines the shape, but doing the inside is just sort of fun, brute force kind of stuff. Pretty wood. Okay, see you back here in just a little bit. I really agonized over what, which side of this to make the top side. And I'm happy with my choice, and in fact I like it quite a bit. I wish. I didn't even have to touch it. I kind of like it the way it is. Looks kind of cool. But touch it I will. We're going to be turning at 560 RPM, 5 8 inch freshly sharpened bowl gouge and mask and face shield on.
tailstock is just really in my way. I think it'll probably hold up okay. I've got a pretty good grip. Well, I guess it's just going to be thick walls, that's all. I'm just about at the edge over here. But that's all right. I like a lot of bark myself. Not everyone does, I guess. I can't tell how thick I am. It's too long of a reach, so let's see. Uh, we're about three quarters of an inch in the bottom. About the same on the side. Getting some real pretty green right there. Wow. I hate to lose that. I hope I don't go through it. Maybe I should scrape these sides before I get too, too far along here. Still lots of vibration. It's hard to get a smooth cut. That's not bad. A little bit of a ridge in there. Well, that's much better. about a half inch. Yeah, it's about three-eighths of an inch in the bottom. I'm quitting. That looks good to me. Feels good, looks good. A little torn grain in there, but it'll sand out. There's just too much vibration to get a smooth cut, sorry. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, time for sanding. Yippee! Not. Well, I guess that's going to go all right. A little bumpy out here on the wings, but that's to be expected. So I'm starting uh, with 80 grit on my 2-inch disc sander. And I'll work up through 400, and I'll bring you back when it's time to put some finish on the inside. Well, I wish I could say there's no torn grain in here, but that would be a lie. There is a little... I just couldn't get it to uh, balance out and get the speed up and there was quite a little bit of vibration I, I just couldn't get a smooth cut so there is some torn grain but the piece feels really good sanded up through 400 grit just like I always do there's some of that torn grain there but hopefully there's enough interest in the shape and the, the bark on and all that that uh, that won't be the first thing you see I just, I just hate, I just hate having any torn grain in there. Just hate that. I've been known to take a piece in the house and look at it for a week and bring it back out and remount it and do it again. But in this case, I don't think it would do any good. That's some beautiful grain where the crotch is here. I'm not sure if it's showing up on camera, but there's a little chatoyance in there. Pretty happy about that. And I did sand the bark with my Sandro Flex at 180 grit. And it's 
nice and smooth and clean. Now I'm just going to have to take a little brush and get in this little valley here in the crotch. And I think while I'm at it I'll put a second coat on the outside just in case I've disturbed anything with my sanding. I can't see that I did but I might have. And no bug holes in this piece. None. Zero. I guess they don't like plums. I don't know. So I will, uh, I'll put another coat on the outside and let it all dry and come out here and buff it up and then it'll be time to turn this around and remove that tenon. Don't go anywhere. So I've installed a block of wood in my chuck and now I'm going to put a non-slip cloth and then my bowl and bring up the tailstock. Just apply a little pressure, bring up my tool rest. Then I'm going to grab a uh, 3 8 inch standard grind bowl gouge and begin to removing this tenon. Turning at about 530 RPM. Check for clearance, lots of clearance. See if I can't smooth that bottom out a little bit. Then I'm going to switch to a 3 8 inch swept back gouge to remove the rest of this tenon. First I need to reduce the size of it a little bit. Now I'm going to slow the speed down to about 200. And I'm going to place the bevel of the gouge against the bottom of the bowl. And apply pressure towards the headstock. Right hand on the gouge, left hand on the switch. That was quick, huh? A little quicker than I expected. switch I said <laughs> and then I'll take it over here to the workbench and sand that up well here it is warts and all one uh, plum bowl live edge in the books What do you think? Bottom finished up. I like it. I like it quite a bit. I sure wish it didn't have that tear out in it. But I, I couldn't figure out a way to avoid it. Or to make it go away. Just too much vibration, too off, off uh, center, or not off center, off weight. I guess it's heavier on this end, where we have two wings instead of just the one. But it's done now. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week and I'd like to keep in touch. Your comments are always welcome and I respond to all of them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.